emails are landing in people's spam uh, junk folders. So go searching for it um, and find it so that you can be linked up appropriately to the messages from the church. Um, Because of uh, the COVID and all of the uh, challenges um, with our COVID that's happening, especially with the Delta virus, uh, Dr. Rice is just going to come in and bring us up to speed, um, as well as have some probably a Q&A if necessary. Dr. Rice? You hear me okay? Um, so there was uh, um, some disturbing and new information about the COVID virus this, COVID virus this week. Um, and it's, it's um, kind of upsetting. <laughs> so I just wanted to give people an opportunity to hear a little bit about it from somebody locally and to be able to ask questions and maybe have a little discussion. Um, this subject will come up in the next church council meeting about what we should do, which is about, I think it's on the 12th of August. Um, so people that are concerned, I think it's good to talk to your council representative and, and, um, and just learn a little bit more about it. So what's new is the current virus that's going around is a variant of the original COVID virus. It's called the Delta variant. So it's very similar, but it has a change in some of its proteins that make it a lot more contagious, probably 10 times more contagious or more. It's probably, um, they estimate as contagious as chicken pox. You know how easy it is to get your kids to get chicken pox. Um, <clears throat> and probably the most disturbing thing for us, because most of us are vaccinated, is that the Delta variant can still infect vaccinated people. We're not sure if they can infect us at the same rate as unvaccinated, but it's a lot, lot more people are getting infected who are vaccinated than it was with the original or, uh, COVID virus. So the Delta is far more contagious even to vaccinated people. Um, so that coupled with it being able to spread much more rapidly is really, really what's going on. Um, kind of apologize for our, hosp or our church administration people um, on the council. An email was sent out saying masks are required this Sunday, um, and that was kind of a miscommunication. Um, none of us really intended it for it to be to say that. Uh, it really should have said what the second email said was masks are now highly recommended because of the change in the virus. Um, so I'm just going to list some things that we know about the Delta virus that are different. So first of all, it's now the dominant strain. Any place they've done testing of what strain the virus is, most places are showing close to 90% of the new infections around the country are the Delta virus. And then the second point is what I said before, it's, it's much, much more contagious. The reason it's more contagious, we think, is it replicates much faster. So the amount of, of virus that you can shed that's in your respiratory tree, like your nose and mouth and throat, is a lot higher. And because it replicates faster, those counts go up quicker. So during the phase, you know, generally 80% of people will get some symptoms. But those symptoms can be delayed several days or even up to two weeks after you get exposed. But the time between when you're starting to be contagious and you get symptoms now, you can, we have to add on a couple of days. It used to be just a day or two with the older virus strain, 
Now it's probably an extra couple days, maybe even four or five days before you have symptoms. And of course, not everybody has symptoms, but most people do. Like I said, in the range of, well, it used to be with the old one, the county health here would say about 90% of people got symptoms eventually from the COVID virus. The other thing that's really disturbing, and that information was published um, on Thursday, uh, was a um, kind of a super spreader event that happened on Cape Cod in a county that's uh, a place where people come and celebrate the 4th of July and party and fills up all the rentals. People's homes are filled up with visitors. Um, it's kind of like here where we have all these visitors in the summer, except for it's a very small enclosed area. All the bars fill up, all the restaurants fill up, um, and so forth. And so they estimated there was about 60,000 revelers, mm. multiple nights celebrating the 4th of July, and really celebrating kind of the end of isolation. Um, people were told this summer we can get a vaccine once you're fully vaccinated. You can now have a good time. And that's what was going on. The hospitals, a lot of the hospitals were seeing very few COVID cases at the beginning of July, um, and the case counts were down. They weren't zero, but they were down. So as a result of that event on Cape Cod, the county there, um, by the time they published the article, had picked up um, out of the 60, roughly 60,000 people, um, about, let's see, it was 469 had positive tests. 346 of those people were fully vaccinated. Massachusetts has a very high vaccination rate. That's three-fourths of the people. Remember, Libby is one-third of everybody in the county is fully vaccinated. About 80% of the fully vaccinated people got symptoms by the time this report came out, which was literally, you know, hopefully at the end of that surge there. About five of the 346 were hospitalized, which is about a little bit more than one in a hundred people were hospitalized that were fully vaccinated. And in the people that weren't vaccinated, five of the remaining people that were not vaccinated that got COVID, five of them were hospitalized. That's a rate of about one in eight people or about 12%, which is higher than we've seen with the original virus. Again, probably because the Delta virus is more contagious. And then the fourth point um, is it's really clear from that event and lots of other information, both in the United States and in Great Britain and India, where the Delta virus started significantly before that, is the Delta virus can be transmitted from a vaccinated person to another vaccinated person or to an unvaccinated person. This was not so much the case with the older strain. Vaccinated people tended not to transmit the virus to other people, and the rate of them actually getting the virus and having a positive test was quite low. And that overall, um, it looks like um, so far with the Delta virus, when they're trying to estimate the number of deaths per population, it's not way higher than it is with the original virus, but it's slightly higher. And it looks like the hospitalizations are uh, a little bit more than slightly high, higher, maybe twice as high. So what's happening in, in Lincoln County, which is what I keep tabs on very carefully. So for about two months, ending about two to three weeks ago, we were averaging two to five cases a week in Lincoln County. And then about two and a half weeks ago, that number started jumping up. And 
the seven days, the week ending last Friday, we were up to 40 cases in that week. So this is going up very fast. The only last time it went up that fast was the beginning of October last year when our big surge started. And, you know, 40 cases a week, we haven't seen that number since February, beginning of February. Um, also in Libby, the number of people who've had to be hospitalized for COVID is going up. That's already happening. And then, very unfortunately, we, we lost, Susie and I lost a, a real dear friend who was a wonderful, gracious, important community member in Libby, uh, died of COVID pneumonia over in the ICU in Kalispell. Fortunately, his wife survived, so is doing okay. So that's why the CDC came out and recommended that even fully vaccinated people wear masks, kind of like we were before. When you're around in close contact with other people and, and when you're indoors with a lot of people that are not in your household, uh, because it looks like to not get this virus ourselves or to spread it to somebody else, we have to use the other measures besides vaccines to help reduce the risk of spreading the virus. I think this is really, really a difficult pill to swallow. All of us were looking forward to a wonderful summer. And because the church is going to have to kind of decide if we need to change what we're doing or not, um, I just wanted you to kind of have a good question and answer session so that most people can really understand kind of what's going on. Um, so I'd like to open it to some questions or concerns that people have or things like that. And there's no silly or stupid questions. <laughs> Uh, many of us have lots of things. Marie? Uh, I was going to ask about younger people being vaccinated. I have a nine-year-old grandson, and they kept saying they were going to start vaccinating younger than 12, but now they've decided to wait. I haven't, has there been any new information on that? So, vaccinating, so vaccinations now have been approved for down to the age of 12. Yeah. So below that, the current prediction is we will have a vaccine for children under the age of 12, probably down to the age of six months, sometime this fall. Other questions? So the question is, how long does the virus persist on surfaces? There's no difference as far as we know in the Delta virus and, and the original coronavirus. The Delta variant, it really is the coronavirus. It just has some protein variations in it that make it more contagious. So surfaces, um, absorbent surfaces are probably less dangerous than hard surfaces, uh, uh, but I, it's probably really rare that the virus survives in a, in a dry environment much longer than 24 hours. That would be very unusual. Um, and an absorbent surface, again, if you don't, like a mask, you're keeping it moist and warm by wearing it when you have your mask on. So the virus can survive on your mask until you put it away in a closet for a couple of days. <laughs> or, or, or the cloth mask can be washed, you know, kind of thing, so. Other questions at all? Sandy. Oh, of the 40 cases that you're seeing in our area right now, what are the uh, age groups that you're seeing the greater numbers in? So the state publishes the cases now five days a week. They're not publishing on the weekend, so I can't tell you what happened yesterday and today. <laughs> um, so Monday we always have a lot more cases published because it includes Saturday and Sunday. So they publish that data and they show the age distribution. So like on Friday, there was eight cases published by the state in Lincoln County and they show the age groups. And the age groups haven't changed. It's the same as it was before. It's every age group that we're seeing. Um, 
So you'd expect to see a lot less cases in people that are vaccinated, but we are, you know, nobody's quantitated that yet to say that's for sure. Um, that's something I could actually look back on and see uh, if it's different. Uh, but we're seeing, you know, all kinds of people. There's plenty of people who are over the age of 60 who have not been vaccinated in Lincoln County. So I don't think there's an age difference going on. Any other questions or concerns or? Okay. So I, I you know, give some input to people on the council. Um, and uh, I think that would be very important over the next couple of weeks. Uh, my wife was visiting with uh, Disney's um, Karen and Lee Disney yesterday, and they're requiring masks at the Methodist Church this Sunday. So, thank you, Doctor. It is uh, <clears throat> frightening and scary, uh, but it's also very, very helpful to have a doctor here to uh, to keep us really informed. I think that's extremely helpful. So we have work to do. <clears throat> Liturgy literally means the work of the people. So we have work to do, especially as we pray, as we read, and as we eat together uh, God's holy sacrament. And Sandy, our new um, LPA, is going to be assisting both as assisting minister as well as presiding. So she will be practicing that the beautiful skill of leading worship as an LPA as she continues to move forward in her um, second career, right? <laughs> so let's have the prelude, and then we'll enter in worship.
Amen. Help us. It's hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when you differ from our ways of the world in which you live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teaching and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can you turn? Share with us the words of eternal life. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Let us join together in our gathering hymn, number 263, Welcome Table, verses 1 and 2. Because uh, this is a new day, uh, we'd like to suggest that uh, I sing through the first verse, and then you join me again on the first verse. We'll sing, I'll sing it twice, and then we'll sing the second verse, okay? I'm a gonna eat at the welcome table. I'm a gonna eat at the welcome table some of these days. I'm a gonna eat at the welcome table. I'm gonna eat at the welcome table some of these days. I'm a gonna eat at the welcome table. I'm a gonna eat at the welcome table some of these days. I'm a gonna eat at the welcome table. I'm gonna eat at the welcome table some of these days. I'm a gonna feast on milk and honey. I'm a gonna feast on milk and honey some of these days. I'm a gonna feast on milk and honey. I'm gonna feast on milk and honey some of these days. by the gospel of God's grace. We try to be welcome, accept, serve, and witness to all people. Let us pray. O oh God, eternal goodness, immeasurable love, you place your gift before us. We eat and are satisfied. Fill us in this world and all its needs with the life that comes only through you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading for the 10th Sunday after Pentecost is found in the Old Testament book of Exodus, chapter 16, beginning with verse 2. Moses, God's chosen leader for Israel, continues his calling from God to lead the Israelites out of Egypt and the bondage of slavery. 
The setting for today's reading is the wilderness of the Sinai. This a reading from Exodus. Then the whole community of Israel set out from Elam and journeyed into the wilderness of Sin, between Elam and Mount Sinai. They arrived there on the 15th day of the second month, one month after leaving the land of Egypt. There, too, the whole community of Israel complained about Moses and Aaron. If only the Lord had killed us back in Egypt, they moaned. There, we sat around pots filled with meat and ate all the bread we wanted. But now, you have brought us into this wilderness to starve us all to death. Then the Lord said to Moses, Look, I am going to rain down food from heaven for you. Each day, the people can go out and pick up as much food as they need for that day. I will test them in this to see whether or not they will follow my instructions. Then Moses said to Aaron, Announce this to the entire community of Israel. Present yourselves before the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole community of Israel, they looked out towards the wilderness. There they could see the awesome glory of our Lord in the cloud. Then the Lord said to Moses, I have heard the Israelites' complaints. Now tell them. In the evening you will have meat to eat, and in the morning you will have all the bread you want. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. That evening vast numbers of quail flew in and covered the camp, and the next morning the area around the camp was wet with dew. When the dew evaporated, a flaky substance as fine as frost blanketed the ground. The Israelites were puzzled when they saw it. What is it, they asked each other. They had no idea what it was. And Moses told them, it is the food the Lord has given you to eat. Word of life, word of God. The New Testament lesson is found in the Apostle Paul's letter to the Ephesians and provides the Christian church with a grand vision of itself toward which it can continually grow and prosper. A reading from Ephesians chapter 4, beginning with verse 1. Paul writes, Therefore, I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling. For you have been called by God. Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. For there is one body and one spirit, just as you have been called to the glorious hope for the future. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all, in all, and living through all. However, he has given each one of us a special gift through the generosity of Christ. That is why the scriptures say, 
When he ascended to the heights, he led the crowd of captives and gave gifts to his people. Notice that it says he ascended. This clearly means that Christ also descended to our lowly world. And the same one who descended is the one who ascended higher than all the heavens so that he might fill the entire universe with himself. Now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors and teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. This will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Then we will no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of a new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever that they sound like truth. Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly as each part does its own special work. It helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. Word of God, word of life. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel is offered to us from the Gospel of St. John in the sixth chapter. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boat and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly, amen, I tell you. You are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. But for the food, but do not, <clears throat> do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then he said, they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him who he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to him, Amen, I tell you. It was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it was my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am, ego in me, the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. There is so much... Uh, Happening, and sometimes Sunday morning gets filled with information, questions. The questions that the people are asking Jesus are our questions. 
What do we do to act and to perform the works of God? They are our questions. They were Israel's questions in the wilderness. I'm going to concentrate for a little bit this morning on the text from Exodus. Because I believe, well, I hope it will be informing about the questions we might have. How do we discern God's presence? Because I know that when we live in that world of Exodus, we practice faith. The same faith that our ancestors, the liberated Hebrew, practice. The faith to live in the uncertainty. That's the power of faith. When we are not sure, we are believing and we are, we are hopeful and we're living in that mark of time. That's kind of what the spiritual power of our faith is, that we live in uncertainty. Even in this COVID problem, we are learning more and growing more and maturing more, but we are always feeling uncertain about what might happen. And so we hold on to our faith and we believe that God will not leave us wanton. And God will give us the hope that we endure. There's a beautiful poet. One of my favorite poets is Robert Bly, a good Midwesterner from Minnesota. He offers a, us a poem that invites me to laugh at myself. And on another level, it reminds me that there are many voices inside me that want a hearing. So this poem is called One Source of Bad Information. He goes this. There's a boy in you, about three years old, who hasn't learned a thing for 30,000 years. Sometimes it's a girl. This child had to make up his mind how to save you from death. He said things like, stay home, avoid elevators, eat only elk. <laughs> now we know that, right? <laughs> you live with this child, but you don't know it. You're in the office, yes. But live with this boy at night. He's uninformed. But he does want to save your life. And he has. Because of this boy, you survived a lot. He has six big ideas. Five don't work. <laughs> right now, he's repeating them to you. You see... The journey in the Hebrew Bible and in the Christian Testament is a journey which nurtures our faith in the middle of our uncertainty. We only know what we have now. The moment now is what we have. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. And so because of our faith, we have to be courageous to live in the now and hope for the morrow. Our ancestors, the liberated Hebrew from Egypt. We pick up this text from Exodus only two and a half months into their liberation. And you can discern in their reading that there was a lot of preparation for their liberation. There was a lot of work. We only have snippets of the story of Moses, and we have the plagues, and we have the negotiations. We have the history of slavery in Egypt. Now, we know a different form of slavery in our country. The Egyptian slavery is much different than ours. But they lived for century, decades in a system of slave a slave economy. And we know what 
happened when they had to live in that confusion. And we know what happened when they had to work their way into a liberation. This text comes at the moment when they're just beginning to understand what it means to be free. I'm going to read it again from what Sandy read, but I'm going to read it from a beautiful translation, interpretation called The Five Books of Moses from Everett Fox. I love it because when you read this text, it sounds like the Hebrew in English. And so I'm going to read this again. And you know that some of the names are more biblically oriented. Moshe for Moses. So it says, They moved on from Elim, and they came, the entire community of the children of Israel, to the wilderness of Sin, S-Y-N, which is between Elim and Sinai. Foreshadowing of what's going to happen in Sinai when we find our roots. On the 15th day after the second moon, after their going out from the land of Egypt, they grumbled, the entire community of the children of Israel against Moshe and Aaron in the wilderness. The children of Israel said to them, would that we had died by the hand of Yahweh in the land of Egypt when we sat by the flesh pots, when we ate bread till we were satisfied. For you have brought us into this wilderness to bring death to this whole assembly by starvation. Yahweh said to Moshe, Yahweh, Moshe, here, I will make it rain down upon you bread from heaven. The people shall go out and glean each day's amount in its day in order that I may test them whether they will walk according to my instruction or not. Then Moshe moves that conversation from God to Aaron, his assistant. Moshe said to Aaron, say to the entire community of children of Israel, come near in the presence of Yahweh, for he has hearkened to your grumblings. Isn't that a great phrase? to hearken to your grumblings. Now it was when Aaron spoke to the entire community of the children of Israel, they faced the wilderness. And here, the glory of Yahweh could be seen in the cloud. Yahweh spoke to Moshe, saying, I have hearkened to the grumblings of the children of Israel. Speak to them and, they, and say, Between the setting times you shall eat flesh. And at daybreak you shall be satisfied with bread. And you shall know that I am Yahweh, I am your God. Now it was sunset, and horde of quail came up and covered the camp. And at daybreak there was a layer of dew around the camp. And when the layer of dew went up here upon the surface of the wilderness, something fine... <coughs> something fine and scaly, fine as hoarfrost upon the land. When the children of Israel saw it, they said to each one to his brother, Manu, what is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moshe said to them, It is the bread from, that Yahweh has given for your eating. What was fun to me, that the word manna, is simply translated, what's that? That's literally what it is. What's that? And you can see the grumblings. Now, I know I'm 70, or close to. I'm pretty close to 70. And I know when I grumble and when I don't grumble. And I know why I grumble and why I don't grumble. And when I Grumble, it means I'm missing the point. I'm listening to that boy inside with five big ideas, and I'm only listening to the one big one. I missed that point. In Exodus and Numbers, the story of the wilderness wandering of the Hebrew Bible, there are eight moments in which we have grumblings 
of the people of Israel for their situation. And this is the first one, two and a half months in. You want us to die of starvation? Let's go back to Egypt. Well, you're going to have to get across that Red Sea that was now no longer parted. It's going to be a little challenging. Sometimes we don't know how good we have it in the wilderness, in the uncertainty. It is the place where creativity, where faith is nurtured and our strength is enlivened. And these people grumbled a lot. And the first grumbling, you hear Yahweh never get angry at the people's grumbling. He just said, I'll deal with that. Here's some quail at night, some bread at morning. In fact, the story goes on that don't eat too much and don't store any of it. If you store any of the manu, it will rot, and it will get maggots in it by mid-morning. And so God wanted them to be clear that every day I give you food. You know, my Lord says, you know, our daily bread in our prayer. Give us our daily bread. Now, my refrigerator doesn't look like I'm worried or I'm concerned about a daily bread, it looks like I got at least a month's worth. But my attitude has to be full of grace and thanks, thankfulness. I know as I'm a liberated person, I'm an American, I live in freedom, but I do a lot of grumbling about my freedom, about the freedom that I want to have and somebody else wants me not to have. And we have this grumbling going on. And I'm really conscientious about making sure that my faith is not political. My faith is public. And what I want to do is give people the freedom to be themselves in public life. I want to be able to give them the sense of what it means to be an American and a Christian simultaneously walking down the road. You know, when we are raising kids, or are raising kids, or may raise kids, you know that they know exactly what their Israelites were feeling. When we headed out on the road, maybe on a cross-country trip to go see Grandma and Grandpa, it was always, within minutes, how much longer? Where's the food? And the how much longer went on for as long as it took. How much longer? I'm hungry. I got to go to the bathroom. Please. And they're not grumbling in a negative way, but they're grumbling because they're anxious for the trip to be over, to be at home with a place of refuge. And that story of Exodus is so much enjoyable, so enjoyable to listen to and watch because I see myself in that story. I see myself in the wilderness of life, entering hopefully the third third of my living, not sure what will happen, but I'm sure I'm going to pray to God that I am thankful every day along the way because it's gratitude that keeps me from being grumbling. And it keeps me in a notion of who I am as a Christian and as a believing person. So if you have a chance, delve into Exodus and read as our compatriot spirit of life and how we as Christians sort of emulate the Jewish journey also, that we're all in this journey of faith not knowing what will happen tomorrow, but celebrating and being thankful for today. So, amen. Go ahead. For this uh, hymn of the day, you'll find it in your hymnals. I just caught a mosquito.
Uh, you'll find it in your hymnals, number 485. And it's an unusual hymn in that all, each of these verses has a different rhythm. <laughs> so uh, what Ellen and I would like to suggest is that you let me sing the verses and uh, everyone please join in on the refrain. So that would be in your bulletin, singing only those words in italics. You'll see. I am the bread of life. You who come to me shall not hunger, and who believe in me shall not thirst. No one can come to me unless the Father beckons, and I will raise you up, and I will raise you up, and I will raise you up. On the last day, the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. And if you eat of this bread, you shall live forever. You shall live forever. And I will raise you. Up, and I will raise you up, and I will raise you up on the last day. Unless you eat of the flesh of the Son of Man and drink of his blood, and drink of his blood you shall not have life within you and i will raise you up and i will raise you up and i will raise you up on the last day i am the resurrection I am the life if you believe in me even though you die you shall live forever and I will raise you up and I will raise you up and I will on the last day. Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who has come into the world. And I will raise you and I will raise you up, and I will raise you up on the last day. Let us join together in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will will come come again again to judge judge the the living living and the dead. dead. I believe believe in the Holy Spirit, Spirit, the Holy Holy Catholic Catholic Church, Church, the communion communion of saints, saints, the forgiveness forgiveness of sins, the the resurrection of the body, body, and the life everlasting. everlasting. Amen. Amen. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Holy Spirit, we offer our prayers for our church, our community, our world, and all of your creation. One God and Father of all, in whom we boldly place our faith, trust, and obedience, we, who you have called to one glorious hope for the future, come humbly before you this morning asking that you grant us the knowledge, strength, courage, and peace to lead a life worthy of your calling. May we more fully recognize your gift of life and nourishment. Empower us to become more like Christ, to live a life of joy, love, and peace. To in confidence and truth spread the good news that there is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of authority, you have called each of us into the ministry of believers. Grant us the faith and steadfastness to follow the examples of the apostles and the prophets, to answer the call to serve as pastors, musicians, lay leaders, and teachers. May each of us use the gifts you have blessed us with to the glory of your holy name. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Sovereign God, millions of our brothers and sisters in our own community and around the world continue to suffer from drought, floods, famine, war, and a host of disastrous situations. We especially ask for cooler weather and rain for our friends and families in the Troy and Yak areas and the friends and families of our Savior's Lutheran Church in Thompson Falls where the forest fires continue to firstly burn. Protect from harm the thousands of firefighters and support personnel who are working tirelessly to protect us, our homes and businesses, and our most fragile environment. May each of us in our humble way help to bring peace, justice, and compassion to this troubled world. May our gifts help to bring healing to the sick, the hungry, the lost, and the lonely. Rain down the true bread from heaven that gives hope and life to our suffering world. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of healing, You are faithful in every aspect of our lives. For those who find it difficult to trust, for the sick and the bereaved, we ask that you bring comfort, strength, and healing to all those suffering from the COVID pandemic. To our friends and families that we have named in our bulletin and those we name in our hearts, before you. To all those in hospitals and nursing homes, to all those across the world who are crying out for help, bless those serving in our armed forces and their families. We are thankful beyond words for their commitment and dedication. Guide, Protect, defend them 
as they face the many challenges of our ever-changing world. For all those so courageously fighting fire and flood, we ask that you keep them from harm and provide them with nourishment and rest as they protect your people and your creation. Hear us, O oh God. Jesus, the bread of life, every face we meet is hungry, whether they can name it or not. They are hungry, just as you and I are. Just as we must have nourishment for our bodies, we all must find food for our hungry souls. For some, a kind word a hug or a handshake offers the taste of hope and acceptance, the opening of a new relationship. Let us be that place of hospitality and acceptance. Let us welcome them in the name of Christ. Let's invite all who hunger for God's word to join us at your table of plenty. Hear us, O oh God. Father of all, caring for others is the tie that binds us together. May we live together in the light of your endless love, compassion, patience, and grace. Knowing that we are far from perfect, forgive our mistakes. Pick us up when we stumble and bring us to the foot of the cross, that we may walk in the footsteps of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Hear us, O God. Master and teacher, as your servants, we in our baptism have been clothed in Christ. We have been fed and nourished at your feast of plenty. As we begin a new week, help us to remain steadfast in our faith. Be at peace within ourselves and confident in, our, in using our gifts to carry out the spreading of the love of Christ to the world. May we each strive to be an instrument of your unfailing grace and peace. Oh, hear us. O oh God, we lift all our prayers to you, O oh God, confident in the promise of your saving love through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the living bread that came down from heaven. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Abide with me, fast falls even time. The darkness deepens, Lord, with me abide. When other helpers fail and comforts flee, Help of the helpless, oh, abide with me. I need 
thy presence every passing hour. What but thy grace can foil the tempter's power? Who like thyself my guide and stay can be through clouds and sunshine oh abide with me hold thou thy cross before my closing eyes shine through the gloom and point me to the skies as morning breaks and earth's vain shadows flee in life and death O Lord abide in me We are so grateful for the continued support to our ministry, especially in these days of COVID and our doors sometimes being closed and sometimes being open. If you would like to make a donation online, you can go to our Vanco site or visit the giving page uh, for more options. And for those of us here today, the operatory plates are in the North X. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. Please stand as you're able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift our hearts to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right in our duty and our joy that we should at all times in, in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by the glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels and the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. people, it was in the night in which he was handed over. Our Lord Jesus took bread and he gave thanks and he broke it and gave it to the disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Then again, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love and unite the wills of all who share in this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Together we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, Father who art, who art in, heaven, in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come. thy will, will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Okay. We can take the bread. Can I take this away?
Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with our own lives. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Let's join in our sending song number 547. As we're beginning to sing, I just want to say how much I appreciate to be back and worship with you and wish you well. You're in my prayers. Um, and what you provided for your pastor is really kind of a, a stellar piece of work to, to really give her the chance uh, to get going with her new baby and their new baby. So I really appreciate it and uh, God blessing on all of you. We can sing now. <laughs> Send forth by God's blessing, our true faith confessing, the people of God from this dwelling take me. The supper is ended, oh now now be extended, the fruits of this service in all who believe. The seed of Christ teaching, receptive souls reaching, shall blossom in action for God and for all. Your grace shall incite us, your love shall unite us to work for your kingdom and answer your call. With praise and thanksgiving to God's ever-living, the task of our everyday life we will face. Our faith ever sharing, in love ever caring, embracing God's children, the whole human race. With your feast you feed us, with your light now lead us, unite us as one in this life that we share. Then may all the living, with praise and thanksgiving, give honor to Christ and his name that we bear. Be to God. 